can pick stuff up, take a look at it, but why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you do? Okay, hi, I'm Judy Hayes, and thanks Sarah for letting me come and share my passion. So when I retired and the pande pandemic, I, we were heading to Florida and I went, oh my gosh, I might be locked in some place. I gotta have a craft. Mm -hmm. And I really seriously did this, Google Go Lady Crafts, and this is one of the <laughs> <laughs> really did. And I printed it out and I went, I can do this. My husband goes, well, we're ready to go, let's go. So I went, oh, who's gonna do it with me? So I threw it on the table and walked out. Got down there, my friend goes, I was bored before you got here. And I go, oh, well, I got something for us. I seriously, it's the best gig I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It's so fun and addicting. But anyway, so what resin is, is a two-part process of hardening. And part of it's adding your colors. And then even after you put it onto your trays and boards, it, it changes. And the next morning, it's even different. And then it's a two-day process, two-part process, and a two-day process. So, and I, Sarah was, um, you know, kind enough to uh, meet and me to show her what I do. And again, like she said, if you want it for yourself or for your closing gifts, um, these are this table's for sale. But if you have ideas of color, shapes of boards, mm. price range, um, I go from. 25 oh my brain yeah, I'll to, talk about oh, you go ahead. okay yep. so you know like I can do this for 25 mm -hmm. and it's still something nice to add to a, a gift and they range from this one's 60 to 50 and the these two are 40 and then 50 so it's I don't go over 60 and I won't go under 25 I can't so we know so, 25 is sort of that magic number if you want to be able to write off a closing gift but what Judy did um, she and, and I paid her for this so that we can use it for all of these and future um, gifts as well but this is a brand like an actual heated yeah. up brand and since these are wood you can bring, I, I, I did tell Judy I was gonna play around with it last night and, and bring in a branded one and I didn't get to it, I'm sorry. But I mean, so what I'll be able to do for any of these, doesn't matter the price, is I'll be able to brand it and now it's a branded item instead of the $25 gift. Um, so just wanted you to know that if, cause for me, one of the things that when Judy and I first met, one of the things that I said was, well, these are beautiful, and I really do love giving something that is unique and special to clients, but for me, it is important that it has our name on it. And she's like, I have an answer <laughs> for that. And so um, sometime, if you're around, peek your head in the office, I'm gonna try and get these done maybe this weekend, just because I'm curious what it's gonna look like. Right. But this is, this is Cedar Haven. It's my logo, ready to go to be to put on to any of these. That's so. um, also, um, so I, I mainly am, you know, presenting wood here, so it can be branded. But I was, I also uh, shared with Sarah that, um, you know, if you have a card or um, a sticker logo or something, I did come up with a decoupage mm. that is waterproof or dishwasher safe. And these don't, you don't right. drench them in water anyway that you could put your label on that way. Because, yeah. I mean, you could do this in metal. I do some crazy metal tin uh, trays. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, that's my spiel. And seriously, it's my passion. And I couldn't keep them all. So my husband said, you better find some out. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I could keep them all. That's the sad part. Will you remind me, I think it was that one and one of these oh, that yes. you did the exact same yes, thing? I, I, um, these two. Oh, those two. So these, just to show you, it will not turn out the same. Is these are the exact same colors, same pour, same everything. Wow. And that's and, how different they yeah. look. So it, it's, it's truly so unique. Cool. Like yeah, yeah. you can give her the colors, oh. but you're going to end up with yeah, several totally different, different looks. Yeah. This will, I, I I've think never it's so been cool. able to duplicate anything. Like I've done this one one other time. I thought I was duplicating it. And you would not believe the other picture. It's nothing like this. So wow. it, it's like, I didn't do anything different. So anyway, it, that's what makes it so unique and everyone will be so. And it's, it's an item that's now a conversation piece in our home, yeah. which is so, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So 
Anyway, you guys can, she has my contact information, yep. Sarah does, and if you guys are interested, you can certainly let me know, and um, and I can even leave these and pick them up. I don't know if well, you want me yeah, to do that. That's up to you. If you okay. want to take those with you, why don't you take those, but we'll leave mine out, and okay, then afterwards so you guys can come up if you want to take a look at them, pick them up. Yeah, okay. All right. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks for coming hey, in, Julie. Thank you. Thank you oh, she also, with each one, um, she'll give you a little card that has care instructions. So your client, oh, if yes. you're giving it as a closing gift, your client will um, know how to keep it clean, take care of it. And you've even yeah. done a couple like parties. Yeah, I where... do a class. Yeah. Um, if I, I'm from Farmington, so uh, there's a shop in town that's a farmer's daughter. Mm -hmm. She has a sign up sheet right now for a resin class, and I'm going to teach her. Oh. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, and because she'll set up, you know, two if you want to, uh, if those are full or something. whatever, we'll do another one. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it is so fun. I it, Yeah, once you do it. I had neighbors, even Chris, the realtor that was here. She goes, Judy, it's not something I ever do. I get a board. That's it. And I sent out to the neighbors, come and do a class with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had nine people and mm -hmm. half of them said they'd never do it. And now they're, they go, can I come over and do a board? <laughs> so, Aww. anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So it's fun. Well, anyway, nice to meet all yeah, of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, Judy. Yes. You and I will definitely be in touch. So, you will. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. When Jason's done, come check those out. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Um, you know, before we really launch into this, I just want to comment on that. And it's something I really want to strongly. And as we're going to start today talking, ultimately, we're going to end up talking about. Um, how to create business. And I think one of the things that I really was impressed me today with the panel who were there was the discussion of how important your spirit is and being in contact with your spirit, how critical that is. Even in the worst time, your spirit is critical. And whenever I talk about how do you keep in touch with your spirit, it's so important that I think you invest yourself in your sphere and you are about what you are about. And if you can find a way to integrate your clients into your business, what a remarkable way to be in your sphere and be present in your own business. I mean, such a client, referring it out, and then expanding that to another staff where Sarah takes that and introduces that to all of you. I mean, think about the impact you can have on the people around you. And that's really what you got into this for, was to impact the people around you. And you know, whether this is the right thing for you or not, I, I don't get to decide. But think about that. I know there's another agent up there I saw do it. She has a client who makes candles at the Renaissance Festival. I mean, why is that not your gift? Why is that not your go-to gift for your clients? Because you the client who does that, that's amazing. You just keep bringing that in circle around and around and around and just expand. What's my gift? What yes. do I give yeah, what do I right. give people? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, <laughs> in the end, that's the point, right? I mean, how do you bring yourself into your business so, so people know what to expect? Uh, or, yay! Yay! Fun! <laughs> Get off the soapbox, buddy. We want to have soapbox. We have Steve come, come talk about numbers. Um, <laughs> yay, thanks, Steve. Appreciate you being here. Uh, a little jab there. It's fine. It's fine. You know, we had a we had a CD on numbers today, so it makes sense maybe that we're talking about that. So, all right, Nick Baldwin has great plans. I recommend that if he ever comes to town, you go see Nick Baldwin. He gets paid for it. I don't. You pay me for it. It's kind of weird. It's just a whole different thing. But he's really good at it. I'm going to distill it down to a couple sessions instead of one four hour long session. There's a lot of value in this four hour session that we're going to miss today, but I'm going to hit the high points so that you know how to do it in the technical parts. 
of it as well, um, so that we can go there. But the first thing that we really talked about is a reintroduction, and this is kind of a pyramid, so we have to build at the base, but um, why, obviously, internet is super important, and your familiarity and your client's familiarity with Facebook, Instagram, websites is a big part of business now. This part of business is changing significantly from what it was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And you're competing with huge companies in a way that you never used to compete with it before. I mean, it used to just be Century 21 is the biggest realtor on the planet, and then there's Remax, and then now it's us. But you're also competing with Realtor.com. You're also competing uh, out there, at least for a moment, with Zillow um, and other companies like that. And the business is going to continue to change in that way. And what's changing for them is their understanding of data and how to use it. So how do we use our data tools to better target our customers and understand the business more effectively? It's kind of what we're going to talk about today, because Facebook is a great way to reach your clients. But not every lead you get in the business is created equal. Facebook leads in general are what they call top of funnel leads. They want to take time to mature. They don't mature overnight, they're not instant. It's very possible that uh, John Doe sitting on his couch or Mrs. John Doe sitting on her couch being forced to watch a television show by the significant other is scrolling through Facebook while the TV show is on and they see your ad and they click on it. And if they do that, that doesn't mean they're interested in the house today. That could be a lead for you. It does mean, however, that if they're in their sphere and you market them properly, they can be a lead for you in the future. And that's an important part of the process. Hey, Matt, this is how you do it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not sure you know. um, But at any rate, uh, that may not be the lead you need today. But what we've figured out over time is it takes on average 18 months for a Facebook lead to mature on average. Now, on the other hand, you might have somebody sitting on their couch uh, and as they're going through and they look at that and they go, that is exactly what I want to do. I am interested in a home today. That is awesome. They click on the thing, they get in touch with you. You do all the very fast stuff to get in touch with them because this is a speed to lead business. You know, Sherry's heard that a million times. Keep saying it all the time, Larry. You'll never stop hearing it. Now that you know you're joining the team, Kelly speed lead, speed lead, speed lead, Steve speed lead. Hey, what's weird? Almost everybody in this room is going to be hearing speed lead all the time. Jess, speed lead. Right. Get on it. Um, and the same thing is true of Facebook lead. Facebook lead is about speed to lead. Um, and the plan that will end up on it ultimately end up developing is a very oh, important yeah. plan in terms of it's a very initial high impact, multiple touches, a very short window of time, and then there's an acknowledgement that this individual probably was Joe, John Doe, sitting on the couch just thumbing through, and we'll pull that and put him as part of the regular 36 touch plan. But initially, we want to make sure we contact that individual many times before they get onto the next person. Because the first realtor to make contact with a, with a contact like this, with this sort of lead, 80% chance that's who they're going to You've got to be the one that has a two-way connection. Without that, you don't win. It's got to be the first one. So, um, with that in mind, uh, we do have our Keller Williams websites. Not everyone is familiar with your Keller, Keller Williams search tools as everyone else. And the Keller Williams search tool is really neat in that it can create an evergreen search for you. What do I mean by that? Um, what, what, what school do your kids go to? Uh, 196. What school? Eastview. Eastview. Eastview High School. Eastview School. Can you be a little more salty today, please? I'm, I'm just, <laughs> God. I'm super tired. Super excited to do PC coaching with you for the rest of the day. Oh, poor kids. <laughs> yeah, look out. Maybe I should leave now. <laughs> All right. So we get properties, and we know how the search works. We get neighborhoods in the area, and these neighborhoods are defined by um, next door app. Uh, and you'll see the name of them here for each of those neighborhoods. That's super nice. <laughs> hey. Waterford Village Townhomes, how fancy is that? I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I sold one in there last Did year. Did you? How'd it go? Great. Excellent. I like water. They, they're probably uh, a bit. Um, within this area, though, there are not many homes for sale. This right really hard. Maybe they've got one. Um, two of two. No. We're going to Minneapolis. Where's that? <laughs> Uh, we do century view visits for century. Um, but within this area, you have all these properties, in fact, over a thousand properties for sale. One of the things you can do is create a filter for these properties. And one of the filters you might use, you could have a lot of different filters. But if you wanted to, you could actually just have it filtered for only open houses. This is all of the open houses in this area right now. And if you were to copy this link here, that will create a search for you that only highlights open houses in Minneapolis. That's a 118 properties, right? So anytime I use that particular link, I will pull up open houses in Minneapolis on my website. Question. Yes. You used the term evergreen. Does that mean that if you post this link in two weeks, it's going to still be those the it current be, open houses? It will be a current updated. search for open houses in a year. So yes. yes, six weeks from now, this will be the open houses that are available then. Um, and if you haven't done a lot of digging into the individual properties, um, obviously on our website, uh, we have the standard stuff. What is there? MLS listing stuff, parking features, financial details. Um, it tells you what neighborhood it's in. And if you're familiar with that, we actually pull in a lot of very interesting information about neighborhoods um, from that app. And the reason this stuff becomes important is as your clients are on the web and looking at your website, more time on your website is less time on everyone else's website and a better value for you. So if you were looking at the city center in New Hope, um, you can find uh, multiple information about what locals are saying. I don't know if you are ever concerned about what you can say or what you can't say, but this is what the locals are saying about the neighborhood. How would you describe this neighborhood? I can't tell you what I would say about it, but I can't tell you the people who live, live there talk about yoga culture, organized sports, shopping, and fitness. And this is all pulled from Yelp. Okay, so this is not you, this is Yelp pulling this stuff. Um, and it's somewhat walkable. I don't know what somewhat walkable means. It means less walkable than walkable, but not as walk, not, you know, not crazy. Um, <laughs> Also, that means there's about, cracks in the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. somewhat. There, there might be some, some places where sidewalks aren't there. Recently, so all, all the standard realtor information. Um, if you wanted to, you can also set up transit and commute things. So if you were thinking about there, and you might say, I have a um, But you can set up, if your client we're using your website just in this way and at this point. They could put their work, for example. And no matter what neighborhood or what house they pick, they would immediately be able to say how far this is from their work, what the commute time is automatically. So this is a fantastic tool for the community. Okay, you passed me about a mile back, but I can't even already see you on the horizon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting smaller. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're <laughs> doing two things. We're, we're doing a link. We're getting we're a creating a link that we can put in a Facebook ad. Yes. And if they click on it, they're going to end up on my your Facebook my page with your website. Search. Right. Okay. But while we're here, we're going to take a look at why someone would even want to go to your website. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Good. So we'll come back to that link. It'll just be it'll be important. Uh, as we go. Um, in the neighborhood, you can, like I said, within this neighborhood, I can define places that I want to search. So if I regularly go to, um, let's say I love Texas Roadhouse, uh, <laughs> I can go to Texas Roadhouse in there and search for a Texas Roadhouse and tell them how far this particular place is from Texas Roadhouse. Okay. I had a client who wanted to go to Texas Roadhouse. 
They loved the YMCA, so they wanted to know how far everything was from the YMCA, and they needed a culprit's course. Those are the important things to them in their life. So you can help them add this up to their, their searches so that whenever they pull up any search in your app, it will give them distances or in your website. So it will remember them? It will remember them because of their login. They didn't create that login. I first. Okay. Oh. Um, within there, uh, you'll also see the, the nearby schools uh, and if, um, you know, the different sorts of information about each of the public and private schools that they would use. So in this particular area, they use Forest Elementary, Robinsdale Middle School, and Robinsdale Cooper Senior High. This is where you get into some of the Yelp things. What's in my neighborhood? What are my options in this neighborhood? There's IV, uh, ooh, unique shopping, Jets Pizza. Have you had Jets Pizza? I haven't. But apparently it's three and a half stars. So that's not a bad choice. And Pub 42, not as good, but maybe nice. And then similar neighborhoods there. So there's a lot of reasons to get your clients acquainted with your website. And the last is the buyer of properties and stuff like that. I know there's sometimes resistance to using, you know, our Keller Williams website for property searches versus um, an MLS direct search. And they just serve different purposes. I say if you're really interested in learning about the property in the neighborhood, you're better off directing your customers to your website where they can see all of this information. It's super easy to navigate each of those places from there. So that makes sense. Just to confuse my So once we've got a search set up, um, I actually a little bit more on, and we found this one to be uh, oh, that's all good. No, no, it's all good. I, I just <laughs> this is Century Middle School, uh, and it's Boundaries. Not every school in there. So like East is kind of weird. It doesn't show there. But this is the boundaries for Century Middle School if you're in Lakeville. So every home that's highlighted is with would be within the Century Middle School accessibility area. And if I go into the filters, one of the other filters that I tend to like, and I think especially right now is very exciting, is price reduced in the last seven days. So again, this is an evergreen search. That anytime I use this URL, this web address, it will pull up homes in CenturyLink school area that have had their price reduced in the last seven days. Anytime I use that address, that's what's going to come up. Hey, Jason, this is Monique. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Could you possibly turn the screen a little bit? I'm only getting part of the video that you're showing or the screen that I can't. You are. We were looking out for that other person over there on the side, weren't we? Enjoy that. There you go. Look at me. Look oh at my that. goodness. Thank you. You win. Um, so there's the, there's the actual school in the center of the search. But these are all homes that are listed in Century Middle School's area that their price reduced. You see the house and the price reduced. This guy right here, not listing in Jason Hurt Camp in the meeting. Do not write, reduce your price $3,000 on a $550,000 house. Family's not listening. This There's agent is it? Is that needs to know. 2K? 2K. I was at 547, dropping down to 545. <laughs> That's going to make all the difference. Um, I'm guessing kind of in the lower right hand corner of that area is quite a bit of new construction. Is there any way you can filter out by your built or eliminate um, yeah, new construction? Yeah, if you go to, um, a lot of those are, could be your to build, be built. You can have your built here, or you can change the okay. year built from. Can, the last well, I would just do maximum of 2021 or 2020 on the year build. Oh, if you wanted no. to weed out new construction. Yes, so yeah. So if I wanted to eliminate new construction. Yeah. Go the other way, buddy. Yeah. yeah. 
I have Val, get a clue. Um, there you go. Okay. Like it. Okay. Thank you. So another to your point, you can make so what now this URL, anytime you use this URL, it will have this search. Yeah. Okay. So each refinement you can make to this website creates a different web page, a essentially permanent web page for that search. And whatever that search might be. So I mean if you want to do this in Farmington, you want to do this in Minneapolis, you want to do this in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's one of the huge advantages that your clients have in this particular case as well, that you can't go on MLS and figure out what's on for sale in Scottsdale, Arizona. You don't have that option. So you do have that option to develop a search for you. That's why this website continues to add different types of value depending on your customers. Awesome. Um, but let's see, oh, we got nine days, 15 days. Jason, okay. one thing that I don't think you said specifically, I mean, you kind of alluded yep. to a little bit, but that Nick said that, like with the Yelp and the schools and the walkability and all kinds of stuff like that, if you're on Zillow or whatever, those don't show all that. So you have to go to all kinds of different websites for all the information that's shown here. And this one, ours shows everything. So helping your customers find this website, understand this website, using our new tools is super important. That does none of what I talk about all benefits for them. What's the benefit for you, Steve? Jerry, what do you think the benefit is for you? Well, you know, the website? I talked to you, I hope, Hope this is okay if I go there. Yeah. About all people I've got on an old website, yeah. and like I can go in and see what their search criteria are. So I can go create the criteria in here, send them the link, and pretty soon I've got sixty people that are going to my website every ninety days um, on the new website because I want to eliminate the old one, which is costing me one hundred and twenty some bucks a month. Um, it's the old eEdge websites, if any of you know what I'm talking about. So this will absolutely do that. What's the other benefit you get for them searching on this website? They see your face and name every time they log in. They see your face and name every time you log in, and everything that they look, every property they click on, they think on, that you're the same. You know. Yeah. Oh. You know what they're looking at. Yeah. So if they're interacting at all with your stuff, you're getting a prompt in command that's going to say, John, look at this on this day. So if you're not familiar with that particular element of command, and this is a this is not an accurate account, I will quickly just our demo account. Um, but uh, within your columns, most of you have this column is the first one you have is recently active in your command. And any client of yours is contact uses your website, uses your app in any way, when as soon as they do that, it will give you a recently active thing. So if you sort by this column, and again, this is not an active account. So uh, I mean, I'd like to believe Harry Potter is looking at my website, but he's not. Um, but if you were, it would tag right here. And every day I logged into command, if I look at this column, and of course rank this column, that will tell me who is most recently on my website and when they were. If I look then within the individual contact record, what they did will show up over here in the activities. So having them on your website is a huge advantage. The more they spend time spent on your, their, your website, the less time they spend asking you why Zillow's estimate is different. And I would think that's a benefit, and it all in of itself a mystery benefit that uh, we'll get to in that way. Um, so, uh, very quickly, that's why the website can be so useful. And the website then becomes useful for how we create our ad within command. Um, because the way command ads work, Hey Jason, before you move on from yeah. the thing you're talking about, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, please. Um, so when you're talking about those searches, um, is that isn't that similarly what the collections do? Yes. 
so very similar to collections. It just, when we have a collection, and the reason I'm doing it this way, you would give collections out to your clients or they can create them. Okay. This way is a little bit easier for a Facebook book. Oh, okay. Yep, so you're a hundred percent correct. I would be willing to bet that most of the people in here aren't really aren't up on what a collection is. Um, and we'll probably do something more about that. Well, I'd like to pretend like I'm really smart and I knew what they were like more than five seconds ago, okay. but I just don't. So, yeah. But it looked a lot like what you're just talking about. It is a lot. Collections is another way you can do the same sort of activities. Okay. So, but you wouldn't be able to use a link then? Uh, the link, I, I, I'm going to go with this because I've seen it work. I don't do anything I haven't tested once. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Since these URLs are pretty long, uh, do you encourage us to incorporate tiny URLs or not? I don't. The way we're going to do this Facebook ad won't work, but they'll never see these. It'll be like an image that goes provided. They're going to click on learn more on our ad, but oh, okay. never see the URL. Oh, okay. okay. So, but yeah, I mean, that's a pretty cumbersome. And to ultimately what uh, Blair's point is, collections might be more useful for that particular thing. If you were sending this out to individually, in a case you were talking about, that might be more, All right. more uh, appropriate. Um, also, as an entirely secondary thing, if you wanted to create a QR code for your clients to go to this website, you could create a QR code, super easy as well. And if you didn't know how to do to make super fast QR codes, you literally click on this search button or this share button right here and go to create QR code. And that will be a QR code for that link. You don't need to download a separate program. You don't need to do anything special. You literally just go create QR code and you will have one. And this will be it. And you hit download and it will download that little picture of the dinosaur. Now, if you're super clever, like my friend Elizabeth in the back, you cut out the dinosaur, you put your face in there, and bam -o, you're in the middle of your QR code. <laughs> If that's not fun, I don't know what is. And you have seen one of those QR codes earlier today in the meeting, and then you're in confidence line, right? That's exactly where that came from, that kind of thing. So QR code, super easy, super fast, right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's a little share button. And the same thing is true on a Mac. It's just a slightly different button, uh, but it's basically in the same place. It's a share button. It'll give you options for how to share this page and QR code. And, so if you ever want to do a QR code for that, you're good. All right. I'm going to log out because campaigns doesn't work for our demo account because we don't have any campaigns. Uh, that We're not real people. We don't have to do real people. So we steal my contacts, bro. All right, you'll find the ability to set and do campaigns uh, here under campaigns. The microphone and blaring this out. I'm telling everybody, not uh, E L A I R, but E L A R E, Blair. Right there on that. Back there. Um, paid ads is where you can create Facebook ads uh, very quickly. Everybody, has everybody here created a Facebook ad before? Super easy. Did you create a Facebook ad, my friend? Just a long time ago. All right, so in order to do that, <laughs> top right hand corner is create campaign. And, oh man, you guys were gonna let me get away with something, didn't you? Especially Hannah, you were gonna way let me get into the weeds and mess this up. You were gonna let me go. No. You were, you were, because we don't have anything to advertise yet. <laughs> she was just let me go. She's like, I know, I got my notes right here. You completely messed up. Designs. I know everybody doesn't love design. And I know that not every human being in here loves design. I enjoy designs because it makes my life simple, but I prefer simplicity and efficiency over being beautiful. If you are, if, if being beautiful is important to you, Canva is a much better way to approach your situation. Because uh, you can do amazing things with that. Um, but I like to just import things really fast and be done with it. And uh, designs allows me to do that. What I'm going to do in design is I'm going to create a design for our Facebook ad today. And that create design is in the top right. 
If you wanted to, you can import a sign. Let's not go down that way, road there. Uh, this is going to be a social ad. So I'm use social. And hit continue. And it's going to give me a button. No authorization. Oh my god, it's so good. It is yes. And so what we do is have you gotten any but Oh yeah. How many have today, Kelly? I don't know how he's looking right now. It was about 18 yesterday. Mm -hmm. I didn't click on him, but he keeps showing up in my feed. Mm -hmm. okay. I love you. <laughs> I'm in your area. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yes. I will update it. By the way, it's really slow. Can I ask more questions? Yeah, ready? absolutely. I was going to ask Kelly, but maybe you did yeah. for Kelly. I did. So, what do you are you running after you did this ad? And I'm jumping ahead. I know I am, so you can tell me if we're getting to this later. So, after you ran the ad. What kind of follow-up campaign did you add into them? Are you just responding to them whatever they? There's an automatic kind of smart plan. Uh, yeah. Is it a smart plan that you're running? Yeah, and then I'm telling you about. Okay. Yeah, and then I jumped ahead of you. But I think it's an important thing because really the whole thing is a process. Right, especially with the Facebook ad. Um, and there are some great smart plans out there that do this. And again, when you talk specifically about a Facebook smart plan, Plan. It has got to be many touches very quickly. And if you don't use a smart plan, the likelihood of your ability to respond as quickly as you need to is pretty low. I mean, just people are on Facebook at 3 o'clock in the morning clicking on your ad. You're not answering that. However, your smart plan can. And it will take care of that either by sending a text or an email right away. Um, in fact, the smart plan we recommend uses to send an email and a text right away, and then the next day another text, and the next day an email, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, um, we Sorry for jumping ahead then. No, no. That, in the end, like I said, this is going to end up being, it, it, we're not going to finish this all today because there's, we'll, we'll do the, I mean, this took four hours. We're going to get it down to two, but that's still not going to be the whole thing. Um, you know, so, there's a lot of value. Did you see my face when you just said two? Or are you saying for two hours today? No, no, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I, I'd love sure. to keep you that long, but I don't think I can entertain you that long. Um, lead generation is a great place to start. Um, or you can go uh, buyers. There's a number of different choices here. Um, Things local expert um, would be an example of an ad. And if you recall which one he used, it was under yep. price update, I think. But in the end, all of them really don't, you can change your ad significantly uh, to be whatever makes sense. For you, um, you find a good one that's pretty easy to get. Um, if you've not used designs a lot, we'll go over some quick design stuff. Like you have this crazy picture of yourself right here. Uh, but Keller Williams here. This, if you've loaded all of your logos, they're all already loaded. If I click on it, it automatically knows that I'm looking for a logo. So that's designated in Design's logo. If I want to use one with red, I just replace it using this flip, and it puts our logo in place. So I don't have to import it, size it. If I want a little bigger, I can size it. Like that a little bigger. Um, coming soon. Um, one of the things that a lot of folks in design really aren't familiar with is the typewriter button. 
If you use a typewriter, it just pulls up a whole screen to type whatever you want in there, and it's a lot easier than typing it in the space because sometimes the text can be super small. Can you point you out where that is again? Yeah. When you showed Toddy there, I didn't catch it either. Absolutely. So if you're in a text space, this little thing right here, mm. I know why people miss it, because there's that little thing right there. When you click it, it will pull up that window. And whatever I type there, so I'm going to do in, in the, the add the Because that's the search that we did. We did a search for price reductions in this area. So I just changed it instead of price coming zoom. It's now price reductions. That's super exciting. Um, I don't know about 000 street name. I'm going to go ahead with. Do that. I could just replace the thing with the logo if I wanted to. Um, Or if I wanted to, because of the nature of this particular space, with given that typewriter, I could go. Um, and then just resize it to fit what I wanted to do. Because that thing is so big, that particular graphics is small, and make the text tighter if I want to. Um, so, as you just work through customizing your ad, you're going to find out what works best. Now this is a crazy picture. Um, I'm not particularly fond of that. If you select stock, we do have a, a, a whole bunch of stock images loaded. Um, or you can pick a picture that works for you if you already have some up there. Um, I would try and choose something that's appropriate uh, to your area or what have you. Like this is not going to work. I mean, nobody's going to buy this boat thing. <laughs> <laughs> if I figure out what it is, um, you know, it's not really bad. But if I went to Tennessee, that might be nice. Um, but choose one that works best for you or your area or something. Again, kind of the, the point earlier might even be something that's unique to you or makes you special, uh, like just to go with plants. What hand dog? And dogs. Winning. I thought maybe it was, if it was fuzzy, it looked like a sloth. <laughs> you know, whatever know. works best for you in that particular <laughs> thing. Um, but this is where you get to have fun if you find that kind of thing, if you enjoy that set of elements. I'm not fond of that kind of thing. I want to be done with it as quick as possible. So the biggest. Uh, Stock image and just swap it. This is the that little the when you highlight a particular area, this is a replace so replace it in design instead of putting something. Um, if you just add it, it will superimpose it over the top. So with this in mind, this could be literally that could be your ad, right? I mean, you choose your house if you wanted to, or you put a picture of a house there that you think is important, whatever you like. In the end, the goal is to have your ad in place. They have a picture. And if you guys notice anything I post on Facebook, like in our in our group chat, always has to have a picture. Tell them put just words in these Facebook posts. Doesn't do anything. People aren't interested in words. The eye catches them, then they're drawn in, then they want to see what's next. So always with that. Uh, from there, you just straight download the ad. High quality. I would do a PNG and, and download.
that creates your unit right here. So this picture is now right here. Download. That's my download tray. Now I'm going to jump back out of design since I have now successfully designed my picture and we create the ad. I think we'll get an ad in at least the ad creation part in, in the 15 minutes. And we'll worry about smart planning next time. Um, campaign. Reeling me in. That's the trick. What, what's the goal, right? Always leave them wanting more. You did it. <laughs> Always leave them wanting more. The hey, only thing is, you got to say you're going to charge for the next session. <laughs> but if you sign up today, don't you get a <laughs> If you sign up today, don't you get wait for more. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're back to create an ad and create campaign in the top right. Uh, we want to attract buyers. We're going to go Facebook. We're going to go Instagram and create campaign. What is our goal? I would recommend using a goal that's what your ad is for. So in this case, this one's going to be price reductions. In Century Middle School. And that's just because that was my search. That was a search I did so I know exactly what I'm looking for when I do this. So later, if I want to duplicate this campaign and run it again, it's easy for me to find. From here, um, this is the, the standard site, um, you know, for any of our ads. Um, When you're doing a headline in, uh, it moves it to right here. So what you type here will appear in your ad. And this is how your ad will appear within Facebook. Headline 25, 25 lines, or 25 characters. So it's got to be quick and to the point. You can copy. Um, one of the things Nick recommends, and I think I'd have to agree with, is using some emojis. When you use an emoji from this thing, it's always going to go uh, at the end. So if you wanted to speed off with an emoji, you can copy it and paste it right at the beginning as well. Just like that. You can maybe add a uh, <coughs> Something like that. Super quick. You don't need to overdo uh, the ad here, but that will, that that part will appear right here. Um, description learn more. Um, that particular piece there. You save that description. <clears throat> to select the media for our ad. One of the advantages of doing this um, is 
Um, if you do it in designs, you add images here directly. I can get browse designs library and pull there. Or if I created something like Canva, I can upload it this way. Since I've already downloaded it, I'll just do that and drag it right into there. Preview and crop the image. All right, I like it. And it'll have anything else that we need to do there. That picture is saved. One picture. Facebook and Instagram, Instagram setting. Make sure you pick your right page. Um, I don't recommend putting anything in the story right now for these types of ads. It's not really a very effective from the story perspective, but feed works. Always, always, always use Facebook lead generation form. It will pull the information from their account. If instead you choose site or landing page, you are relying on that consumer to type in their stuff. Not even people like to type in their stuff. No, they do not. No matter how many times you send them to a Google form, they go, I don't I, I'm not doing that. Except they're really nice people, really rare ones. Um, and see our web page here with our search. Right. Do some thinking, make sure that's a regular and working web page. Checks out. So here, they never see that. So they'll never see this URL. The only thing they'll see is learn more. So that's why you choose it that way. Um, and I will open it up for questions right now because we'll come back and do the next setting up with Smart Plan and some custom audience things next time because you do want to set some custom audiences. Um, it's all right to leave Facebook in charge of it, but um, folks who have done a lot of Facebook advertising, a lot of practice and figured out there are some audiences that are really strong. So we'll talk about that next time. Questions? Yes. Well, I was going to ask, um, and this is probably be going, to cover, uh, going to be covered next time. Um, if they don't take any action besides clicking learn more, does that pull in their information? That will, if they click learn more, that's all you need them to do. Okay. To generate, and that will fire off your smart plan. And just from a smart plan specific thing, well, we don't go into the smart plan itself. Um, as part of configuring your ad, you do configure your settings. So one of the tags you might put in there, for example, is it'll auto tag anybody who clicks on this ad. Now, they click learn more, it will auto select with a Facebook ad tag. So everyone who clicks on this will be imported into my database with the Facebook ad tag. And I have the option to also select a smart plan. Now, if I already have one developed, and I do, I can click that smart plan here. If I wanted to, I could add them to multiple smart plans as well. When now, your challenge with anybody who does this form, if you've ever done a Facebook lead form, is you don't get their address. So without their full address, it's not going to be able to do like a neighborhood nurture automatically. So you would have to recover that information. Would you advise having smart plans set up before? You run your ad. Um, yes. 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 And if you just want, if you know you can't make it next week, I'll meet you. We can talk. You know, we can do any of this offline as well. You don't have to be here next week. That's just for you. Oh, I'll be here. Um, actually, do one time. Uh, <laughs> if you look up Nick Baldwin's Smart Plan to change the author search for the name, there's a way to search Facebook for Smart Plan. We'll do that real quick. Yeah, we'll leave that there. We're not saving this campaign. We're going to do it again next time. It's got the people. Some, there will be some people next time we're new, so we'll have to start a little bit. A little bit cover back. But smart plans, these are mine. Here, this is the library. Think about smart plans library. Think the smart plans library is the app store on your phone. It is just like the app store. Anyone can make them. Some of them are terrible. How do you know? Well, a lot of downloads, high rating, good. Not a lot of downloads, bad rating, bad. Don't do it. Flash.
flashlight apps. Stay away from them. Um, but in, within here, you can search by the name of the smart plan if you happen to know it, but I found that there are a lot of great authors who I trust, great good things. I search by author name, in this case, Nick Baldwin. Um, and then it will pull up, he's got 22 different smart plans. The two that work really well for what, we, what we're doing today are this revised town and property specific plan or uh, for pending sales Facebook campaign. Um, and this is another example. The pending one, just a different search you set up for properties that are pending. All kinds of different choices out there. Depending on how you set up your searches, you set your property up, your, your thing a little bit different. So once you've downloaded that, you download that, any of these plans by the Add Smart Plan, it will appear in your library, and you can take a look at what that smart plan does by hitting edit, and it'll review that smart plan with you, and kind of just go over that. So the first thing that happens is when that person clicks on that button, that learn more button is, they get a text that says, hi, contact, first name, it's, and it was your age and first name, but Keller Williams will put homes for sale on Facebook, you click on them. I'm sure you're not looking to make the move just yet, but is that, is that an area of interest to you? Should I text listings to you here or email them to their email address? That is the text that will send to that person. If you don't like that text, change it. I don't recommend changing. Don't mess with things that work. Somebody's giving you a system and model that works, follow their system and model. If you have to change it, you can change it to anything you want, but that's what's set up. Second, after that, this is also on day one, it will also send them an email. Again, this is basically instant. Not exactly instant. You still sit there with the watch. But it will send them an email. Hey there, Joe. It's Steve Rawl with Keller Williams. Put, your, put homes for sale on Facebook and you click on them. Not sure you're making moves yet. Is that an area of interest to you? Should I send listings here or text them to your phone number? Bam. It's their choice, right? They're getting an email. But we all know what's going to happen. They're going to ignore it. But it will say best Steve Rawl and his team name and your KW app link. So they can download the app directly from here if they wanted to. Get my app? There you go. A day later, it's going to create a task for you in your task list to call them. A task reminder. So in your task list, it will remind you to call Joe Johnson, the guy who clicked on your ad, and it's going to tell you he submitted a contact from a Facebook ad. Right? Kelly, have you called any of those people? Mm -hmm. And have you gotten responses and they answered? Yes. There was one lady in particular, I mean, I haven't done a great job of following up yet, but um, one lady I talked to, um, yeah, she has a house still in Red Wing, wants to live in the cities closer to her kids. Not ready yet. And I said, oh, well, would it be helpful if I can get your home address, I can set you up on, you know, an email that you'll find out what's selling in your neighborhood. You know, it'll just come to you automatically, just so you have a, you know, you know what's going on in your neighborhood. She's like, oh, that'd be great. My address is pulled along. So you can, that, that's absolutely there, that step. Um, great task. It will also send you a task reminder to create a saved search for that person. Saved search. Does everybody know what a saved search is? Is that coming from the MLS or? <laughs> it could. Or if you went back to, um, I don't have another command window open. We'll come back to this real quick in a minute. A day later, it's going to send another text. Two days later, another text. Another day later, it's going to remind you to make a phone call. Two days later, another text. Again, we're talking about that super, lots of touches really fast. And then it backs off after sending them a couple more texts. And then it completely backs off and sends them one last question and six questions. What are you looking at? Ooh, there's six different answers. So it sends them one last email. You can create a search for a contact in command, so you don't even have to enter them into MLS. Look at that, I even have somebody see strange here too. Right here in C and strange, I go to save searches, 
Create safe search. Search by, well, we're going to search by custom. And for the purposes of this particular thing, since this is what they clicked on, um, I can either draw on map or do a zip code or something like that, whatever works best for that person. But if I want to do a custom one, I can draw it on the map. Again, I don't know this person from Adam. All I've done is respond to my Facebook ad. I ended up flying. Um, so I've got that particular thing, and then I can go back to price reduce seven days. So that's what I originally sent. So I'm basically just sending them this on a perpetual state search. So when it updates, you do it next. Um, I would like them set bi-weekly, monthly, daily, instant. We'll send one every week. And so now he's going to get that and get a, that search, roughly that I just created two seconds ago, that's going to get to him every week he's going to get that search. And I've never even contacted him. We have yet to have a conversation. So you might put them in MLS. But because of the nature of this particular search that they were interested in, I'm just going to keep beating the same drum because that's what attracted them. Um, an MLS search, I might have to find a lot more criteria and, and kind of tinker around in there. If that works for you, though. What's the best tool? The one you use. I like it because I keep them in for me. And I keep it everything for my efficiency is more important than, than granularity. What other questions? Especially with something like this. These are top of fun leads. This is my best friend, I might do it for you. <clears throat> so I know like Kelly's done it, she's got a number of leads. Um, in fact, one of their leads was from Texas, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, yes. big book, <laughs> he's from Texas, but he wants to move me. That's where he wants to move. So there you go. Um, you just speak Spanish, so it's a little bit harder for us. Uh, us, but you know, other people maybe you can benefit from that. Second thing you could do it, on the other side is if you had a property you were trying to sell and you knew that this property maybe was by Medtronic, for example, and you knew that Medtronic had other offices in other areas. You know, there's going to be people moving back and forth, and you hear they're opening a new wing, or like if you were thinking about the Mayo, where the Mayo says, oh, we're doing this new expansion, right? And we know the Mayo recruits a lot of doctors from Syracuse and New York, for example. Oh, that it turns out they do. Um, you could advertise in Syracuse, New York, with exciting things in Rochester. I mean, you could do that, right? Or if you had a property you were trying to sell in a particular area that, I said, it was close to Medtronic, you advertise in different places where Medtronic has offices. So in case there's somebody there, you're trying to pick them up and get them to We have so much versatility in how you do this and who you send this to, it's up to you. Now, obviously at that point, if you're, you're trying to sell this house that's close to this mythical house, close to Medtronic, you're fishing off of a pretty wide ocean, but I'm assuming you're gonna make some choices about why you're doing that. Like it might be a difficult house to move. And so, <coughs> You know, there might be value in investing some money for it. What other questions you got for me? You're going to talk next week about uh, creating the, the smart plan. About, about, keep, about um, narrowing the audience. Narrowing the audiences okay. and making sure that, because there's a couple smart plans we'll want to walk through, but hopefully I'll get you at least an overview if you want to learn it right away. And if you felt like there are anything missing and you, you want to talk about it, schedule an appointment, put it in there, try to take 10, 15 minutes to do anything. If you're just trying to do it, it's not quite going the way you think it is. Schedule an appointment, 15 minutes, we'll have it in now. Did, did he recommend a certain dollar amount to start with? Or like search um, or feed or 
I think you gotta you gotta tailor it to what you feel most comfortable with. But the thing about this type of search is because of the nature of the ad, you could theoretically run it in in depth. You could run that for 365 days. It's always gonna pull in the most current information. And that's what makes it super interesting. This is a, this is an ad you could run for 60 days at a time and just kind of fire and forget kind of options. Um, versus, you know, I just listened to this house, it just sold, um, it's a different, different market you're searching. You know, things that people, in the past, you've heard them say, well, I, I would like to find this or whatever, like, for example, a, a specific school system, mm -hmm. or on a lake, mm -hmm. uh, lake create, all, yeah, create, create the search, search well. and keep it forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think as far as price, obviously you can do whatever you want for the ad, but didn't we say that it's best if you do at least five dollars mm -hmm. oh, a day? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, dollars a day. Okay. Five dollars a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to run it that day, you basically said they will. Yeah. Five dollars a day. You can always write the way. Have you followed Nick Baldwin on Facebook before? Uh, I follow McBell on Facebook in multiple group lab code agents and commander conversion. I don't do commander markets on there. I probably should. I don't think I don't. I intended to go to that. He was here a year or two or three years ago, and I went. Same place, the Egan, you know, center. And yeah, he's below. And he does all of this stuff on the on YouTube channel in different ways and different things, and. Great resource. Um, I posted a video today from Mike Hyde uh, about Command Your Sphere, and it's basically about your 36 touch campaign, how to make that work efficiently for you. Um, hopefully, if you watch Mike Hyde's thing, you get some confidence in Twilio. He literally sends out a text during the during the two hour training, sends out a text that says, What are you doing the Father's Day weekend? And he got back 11 responses during the thing and three leads out of those 11 responses. So I know that in a lot of ways, for some folks are super, I don't want anything to do with Twilio. This is crazy. It's very scary. It's not my number. And for a lot of other people, it is just, it's just a text I get. And I respond to texts more quickly than I do email. Phone calls I don't take. Um, I can tell you 100% that's true. If you ever want to talk to me, send me a text. Probably get a response pretty quickly. So an email, I don't know, maybe phone call. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I know you, so I just call, but you know, probably not gonna happen if I don't. Check my mom's block on my phone. So you know, what are you gonna do? So thanks for coming. Yeah, um, back next week. More stuff. Again, your goal is just to build, these are top of funnel leads. Your goal is to build longer term. This is not gonna, you, you may get a house tomorrow, um, but more likely it's gonna take a few months for some of these features. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, have you, have you converted on any of these? From your uh, not yet. We've had conversations, yes, so, yes. And I have a lot of fun to call. And you guys, but you guys, you guys have been running these for a while. Well, this particular one, we 